Stand by Jersey Mike subs. Be a sub above. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for Alabama and Texas A&M. Sears, Bradley, Miller, Clowney, Benny Ocko for the Tide. Wade Taylor, who Jay just talked about. Dexter Dennis back after missing a midweek game with a sprained knee. And both coaches in their fourth season. Eight Oates, his fourth year in Tuscaloosa. Really contenders for Final Four in the NSA tournament. Alanis Poole, Doug Shows, and Mike Nance, who's got the ball in hand. Three of the best officials around. And we're ready for the 23rd meeting all time between the Aggies and the Tide. And here we go. Well, the crowd's ready. Let's see if the Aggie defense is ready. Jaden Bradley, what a sensational freshman in the country at the point. On the drive and ran out of territory and threw it away. Interesting start, Brad, because Texas A&M is looking to take away their threes here, and that was a baseline drive that normally gets them a three. They took it away. Alabama, one of the fastest teams in the country. Texas A&M, not slow, but let's say methodical in their approach. That's a good point, Brad. They're, they're not slow. They can play fast, but they can play slow better than anybody. Short on the baseline, jumped her by Dennis, and here comes Alabama in a hurry, and again, same spot, same corner, same guy, same turnover. You know, this looks like a bad pass, but really what it, it's the energy of Dennis chasing him down and making Brandon Miller get rid of that quickly and not throwing that pass at the perfect position. Mark Sears are saying, please don't throw me one over in that corner again. <laughs> so two possessions, two turnovers for the Crimson Tide. Good start for the Aggies because they're getting into the rhythm of Alabama's offense and taking that away. Tyrese Radford hooks it back. The extra pass to the baseline. In and out. For Marble. Good job matching up in transition defense. Outside, Clowney, short. Offensive rebound, now Sears gets a triple look. And that one's in and out as well. And Dennis, high up for the rebound. Alabama has not been getting off to great starts because they're two good looks right there. They normally knock down. And there's a floater that goes for Wade Taylor. Brad, when you see a guard like Wade Taylor get to that mid-range and throw up a floater like that, that's a great sign because they're going to kind of give him that shot. They're not going to give him threes. This time Sears gets a good pass in the corner but missed the three again. Dennis, pull up triple. Got it. Dexter Dennis coming off that knee injury where he missed their last game. You and I were watching him in practice hoping. We saw a couple dunks. We knew he was ready to go. Yeah, and then the warm-ups before the game. Practice yesterday as well, but we saw between the leg dunk and the warm-ups, we looked at each other and said, he's ready. And there, Alabama has the answer with Jaden Bradley's three. But not really Jaden Bradley's game, the three points. I, I, I'd like to see him drive it early in the clock a little more, but he'll take it. That's his only seven made three all year, so you're right about that. Aggies will maintain possession. Alabama is as good in transition as anybody in the country. And they'll take layups and they'll take threes. And that was a great one they got for Bradley. Aggies only get about 25% of their points from three-point land. And Alabama, as Jay said, just the opposite. Drive and score by Radford. If we hear something that sounds a little bit like a boo, it's not. It's boots. They're yelling boots. Buzz Williams says Radford is tough as boot leather. So that's his nickname. Rebound Sears on the baseline. A kick out. Miller can't connect. And in a ball. Bradford plays a lot bigger than his size. He's only about 6'2", 6'3", but he's one of the top rebounding guards in the country, and he can get in there amongst the trees and finish. He's done it all year. That's nothing. That's not a surprise. Somebody would say, that's not a good shot shooting over the big, but for him, it is. Yep. And he averages about five and a half rebounds a game. Alabama has one three to show for their efforts offensively so far. And they got a push. And a foul on the Yankees. And it's going to be on Henry Coleman. 
This is this is the physicality that both teams are going to try to play with today. And it's interesting how officials call this at the start. You know what, Brad? When, when, when I was coaching, I would always hope the referees would, at least early, if it's a 50-50 call, give it to the road team. That one wasn't 50-50. No. <laughs> That one, they're trying to fight through. That's called an elevator screen. And they fought through the screen. They just got their legs tangled up. Taylor checking down to Radford. Three minutes into the game. Four-point Aggie lead. One of the things the Texas A&M guards do is they'll pass up some early shots because they know off the dribble they can get that shot late. It was late in the shot clock, a little too strong, and the rebound Sears running alone in traffic. And they're going to call a foul on Taylor. Trying to run him down. That's not a guy you want to get into early foul trouble for Texas A&M. Wade Taylor has to be on the floor. He leads them in scoring. He leads them in assists. One of the best free throw shooters in the country. Exactly. And getting to the line, Brad, as you know, that's why he's so good at it. He gets there a lot, and he gets in a rhythm during a game. Line will kick it out to Bradley. The Aggies are tough defensively. They can get up into Miller and they're forcing. Oh, another bad pass by Bradley. And Radford's going to run with his teammate. And the flush by Coleman. Aggies defense early is very impressive. Alabama's completely out of rhythm. When you see them miss open shots, that just means they're out of rhythm. Alabama one for six from the floor. And trailing. By six. Sears on the inside drives a crazy underneath shot, but he did draw the foul from Julius Marble. So he'll be going to the free throw line when we come back. All Aggies early. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deal's possibility. And I think Brad's trying to teach the guys that every day at, through this tough situation. And no matter how far Alabama goes, the shadow of that tragedy is unfortunately going to follow them along. Sears at the free throw line after he was fouled before the break. Sears made a smart play there, and they're not making threes, and they like threes in transition. So he purposely went and created contact to get himself to his line. That's a veteran player. Get that good look from 15. It might help you along the way, and he got them both. Alabama a little token backcourt pressure. John Quinterly in the lineup right now guarding Taylor. And Taylor got around the pick and then a floater that won't go. And a whistle and a foul. Nobody draws for a house like Wade Taylor. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing his craftiness. And it's really a, a level of basketball IQ that allows him to understand when somebody's on his back and when to stop and take that contact. He did it to Javon Quinterly. Javon Quinterly, arguably the best six man in college basketball. Come on, he's right. won so many games off the bench. You know him better than anybody. <laughs> yeah. I'm so proud of how he's grown as, as a leader, you know, for a senior to come off the bench like this and really help the young guys is, is, is really admirable. Wade Taylor. He's been to the line in the last nine games ten times or more from the free throw line. And as you just see, connects on 86% of it. So, a perfect guy at the line, a perfect guy to draw the fouls, as Jay was talking about. And some traffic up off the window. No good, no rebound. Cleared off by Dexter Dennis. Now, head. Tough catch. Block shot underneath by Clowney. And on the run out, they missed. But inside, the follow is good by Brandon Miller, his first points. Not a good couple possessions there for a &M. They don't want to get out and run with them because Alabama can recover like we saw the block shot there. And then Alabama turns it in to a bucket at the other end with an offensive rebound. Marble on the outside, that is not his shot. Rebound comes off to Clowney. And Alabama looking to push it again. This is where they're dangerous, Brad. And they get going. Good job by, exit by Texas A&M slowing them up here. Miller. Fadeaway three. Rebound off to Taylor. And he's got a man ahead. Marble up and under, and it got blocked again. 
Oh, that looked like it came off the backboard. I thought so, too. Let's see that again. Miller in close this time. Tips his own miss and got it and won. Chance for a three-point play for Brandon Miller. These, these are, two, again, these are the same type of possession we were talking about earlier. That ball hit the backboard first, but it wasn't above the rim. It was below the rim. Now, that's the second time now A&M had possession, went out, missed in transition, right. and Alabama turned it into a bucket at the other end with an offensive rebound. That's that's not the way you want to beat Alabama, especially a team like Texas A&M that is very effective in the half court. Brandon Miller, leading scorer in the SEC. And he ends up with a three-point play and five for Miller here early. You know what happens sometimes? You talk to your guys about we want to slow down the tempo and then get out here with the crowd. And they get all yeah. excited <laughs> and they get going. It's happened to us. Taylor inside got pumped again. Let's see. Is the basket count or did he get hit before the shot? If, if we can get another look at that one. Look at he has a layup, but he chooses the contact. That's why he gets to the rim more than anybody in the SEC. And it's really intelligent because getting to the foul line, even though he made this basket, getting to the foul line early in the game is far more effective than the basket because it's going to get Alabama in closer to the one and one right? And it's going to get their players less aggressive offensively. Excuse me, defensively. This is why he gets to the foul line a lot. He's number one in free throw percentage. And we've got three of the best free throw shooters in the conference here today. Tyrese Radford does the same thing for them. This, this is part of slowing down the tempo. Not letting Alabama play at the speed they want to. Brandon Miller on the dribble, working against Garcia. High up off the window, offensive foul on Miller. See, these last couple possessions, this is more how Texas A&M wants to play. Get in the half court, slow down. Make the Alabama play half court offense. We that's called loading, loading to a great ISO player. So they were anticipating the drive before he ever started. So they were there to take the charge. And Brandon Miller's got to realize he's not going to be able to get to the rim in the half court. Miller's going to sit. Good charge taken by Radford. Got a four point Aggie lead. Taylor behind the back to Garcia. Garcia is a crafty guy. He, he brings a lot. To the floor when he comes in here, almost like a fourth guard. Almost a tie up, and then a shot by Coleman as we go. Length, Alabama's length, They're as long as anybody in the country that, that bothered Coleman. And another Aaron pass in right here with another steal. Now, now they slow it up. This is a great decision. They don't need to get out and transition because they can score in the half court. And a foul on Redford on the drive. All episodes of 1923 are now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. And the a and Aggies streaming from the free throw line right now. Radford goes back. He's gotten better since a year ago. Shooting about 79% from the line now. Boots Radford had an opportunity there to get out and transition. He was right in front of us, Brad. You saw him just pull it back. Yep. Because they're so effective, their guards, especially Wade, Radford, and Dennis. They're so effective in the half court. They can get the same shot in the half court the way they spread the floor. They can get in transition. And that gives Alabama less possessions. And Alabama is the most explosive team in the country offensively. Well, we're seeing a little taste of this. I know we've been talking about it for six and a half minutes. But AM averages about 19 made free throws a game. It's just unheard of. <laughs> it's, it's, it's setting a record this year. And I love how they're slowing them up and making them play in the half court here. What Alabama has to do is just forget about trying to run specific plays and figure out what AM's in because AM changes their defense. Just ISO and get into driving space. Crossport pass got an opening from three, but it rims out and Taylor will bring it up to Texas AM. That's the Mari Barrett's job. He's a three and D guy. He'll come in and shoot threes and play great defense. Too 
and a half short execution. They can do this because at the end of the clock, Taylor can get a shot anytime he wants, and so can and so can Boots. Griffin, that three's off the mark as well. Taylor might lead this game in rebounding so far. Yes. Radford ahead and up and under for Coleman. They're flirting with fire right here, getting out and running, but sometimes you got to let your guys go. They're feeling so confident. And they got their biggest lead. They're up eight. Apparently, working on Gordon. Gordon, nice job defensively. And that shot forced up there, but it's going to send Welch to the free throw line. When we come back, Aggie's looking good, Jay. Five, six seed. They're watching this too. And remember, Alabama had to head beat Houston. Yes. Back earlier in the season. That's going to be interesting how that plays at the end. That number one seed could come down to Houston and Alabama. Dom Welch has not been to the free throw line many times for Alabama this year. It's only his 11th free throw. He had hit his previous eight. You know, he's. He's a thousand point scorer at St. Bonaventure. And he's coming we're, off the bench. You we're, not, we were talking about that earlier on the way over here. You and I are getting a kick out of these veterans, right? And how smart they are and how mature they are to come off the bench. That's really one of Alabama's great strengths is veteran players off the bench for freshmen are starting. And of course, the veteran Wells gets them to the foul line and slows down to the Aggies' run. What a finish by Marble. Off the Radford dish. Alabama likes to attack right away after the main basket. And the Aggies three-quarter court defense is slowing it up. I think Alabama's just got to spread it out and drive and space shoot their threes. Welch misses the three. And a tie-up on the rebound. Possession arrows going to the Aggies. The Aggies' bigs are so mobile. They're not really long. They don't, they don't block shots. But they defend by taking charges, and then offensively, they've got great mobility, and it's tough for the, for the longer, bigger Bama forwards to stick with them. Bama's got a hang tougher. This is a typical on-the-road game for a top team that everyone brings their best game for. Alabama knows how to handle this. Drive by Radford, and a strong move to the hoop again by Boots. I like that six. I like the push by Alabama right after the make. Aggies didn't get into their three quarter, but they did get slow back to slow them up. Sears on the baseline, the kick out. He steps. Nope, they're going to call an offensive foul. Wow. I thought he stepped on the baseline. Wow. Let's let's take a look at that. Let's see. That's that's where they like to get to the baseline, and then wow. Uh, I guess Garcia took guess the hit. Saying he was there. Garcia is one of their best to take a charge. Now he gets a free pair of socks. You know that, right? That's right. I know that. <laughs> I love that. I you love take the charge, and they keep track of it. How many pairs of socks you get as you go? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now Gordon's in there. Gordon started the last game when Dennis was out. He's sneaky athletic. Rafford didn't hit the rim. Would have been a shot clock violation had they not got another look. Alabama brings it down, trailing by double digits. See how Garcia can stop and guard a point guard like that? That's really effective defensively. That just stopped their break. Miller straight up with it. The threes are not falling for Alabama. They got one early, and that's about it. Thursday, you can see why everyone believes in ghosts with a funny new episode. Guest starring Matt Walsh this Thursday after Young Sheldon on CBS or catch up anytime on Paramount Plus. This is Jay Wright's new favorite show. Yeah, I've, ghosts. I've watched these promos so much, I, I've started to watch them. No, <laughs> it's working. That's what I do with the, the neighborhood and Bob Hart's have a show on Monday night. <laughs> I did so many promos and now I can't miss the shows. <laughs> See, when you have guards like this, Brad, you can do you can be really patient. And a few Texas ain't have turnovers. You can be patient, but you gotta be smart. <laughs> Alabama's had the turnover problems, not AM. And and AM has 
gotten out in transition a couple of times because of it. And this this has been a little bit of a problem for Alabama this year. If, if they have any weakness, and they really don't have many, it's sometimes they can get a little loose with the ball. And, and, and that's from the way they play with space and pace. When you drive and kick and throw long passes, you have a chance for, for turnover. Partner, that was not good news on that last foul. It was on Wade Taylor. That's two. We'll see how long he has to sit. We're only at the midway point of the first half. Good call, Coach. That is a big one. That's a really big one. Miller working on Dennis in the paint. Long arm, short arm with a left hand. Dennis is one of the best defenders in the SEC, and it's interesting to see how many times they get him matched because they like to switch. But if they get him on Brandon, they're going to keep him on Brandon. The other thing to do is they like to get Brandon Miller and have to defend ball screens. That's why they're calling Coleman up. Four to shoot. Bradford, let's fly. Off the iron. And the rebound kept alive by Solomon Washington. Hayden Hefner in there now. Great three-point shooter and a, a little craftier guard than people think. And offensive foul on Boots Radford. And you know who took that foul, right? I think that was Brandon Miller took that charge. It was. That's that's what makes him great. You know, sometimes you have young guys with good scores, but they hurt you defensively. They don't rebound. He's one of their leading rebounders, and, he, and he's a very underrated defensive player. That's what that's what the NBA guys love about him. If you're just looking at this score and just joined us, an 11-point lead that can vanish in a blink of an eye with Alabama. They've had 17 in the second half earlier this week against their arch rival from Auburn and came back and won the game in overtime. So they've got a long way to go. This is where Quinterly's tough. You've got to keep him in front of you. Boy, that was just a blow by and a scoop shot with a right hand for Javon Quinterly. So Alabama's going to a really small lineup right here. And that's opening the floor for Quinterly. <laughs> Tyrese Radford doesn't care who's out there right now. He's just having fun. He's got eight. He said, you go small, there's no rim protection. <laughs> I'm going to the rim. We're going to spread him out. Miller, the kick out. Griffin will try another three. Still can't get it to go. Loose ball. Rebound comes off to Dennis, and he's going to flip it ahead, but he's going to be fouled, I think. Timeout. 7.53 to go first half. A promise is a trust not to be. Don't have a play to run at the end of a shot clock. Either one of those two can get themselves a shot, a teammate, or each other a shot. Taylor leads them with 73 pointers. Boots 36. And this guy, good to see him back on the floor after missing the midweek game with a sprained knee. He's so underrated. He's doing a great job on Brandon Miller. They, Texas A&M likes to switch a lot, but what they're going to try to do today some is if Dennis is on Miller, don't switch. Let him try to stay with him because of his length and his toughness. And he knocked down both free throws. The lead continues to widen for the Aggies. We know Alabama can get some open threes and get it going and go on a quick one at any time. The one danger of this pressure is you open up the floor for threes. Alabama hasn't taken advantage of it yet. They're one for 12 from outside the arc. Here comes another one. And that one's off the mark as well. But notice they're not getting them from Miller. Now Griffin's taking a bunch. When Quinterly drives, he's looking for Miller, but they're not leaving Miller. Texas A&M is staying with him and not helping with him. Three won't go. Rebound off to Quinterly. Can run oh, now tough. with Miller. Miller hanging in the air and blocking fouls going to be called on Hefner. Miller is a little bit, little bit like Wade Taylor in that he knows how to angle his body. He knows when the defender's in a position of strength and when he's in a position of weakness. And he does a great job getting to the foul line too. He knew he wasn't going to be able to make that shot, but he knew 
Hefner wasn't in legal guarding position to get himself to the foul line. And he'll go to the free throw line for the first time today. A little conversation in the lane with both teams and Doug Shouse and Mike Nance, two officials. And Miller will hear from the crowd now, I'm sure, as he has every time he's touched the ball. That's going to happen anyway when anybody comes into town and it's the best player. And when you add the circumstances to Brandon Miller, here's a little bit more. And I think Alabama is starting to get used to that. You know, being right. at South Carolina, it was, it was impressive. South Carolina played great. And for them to be able to hold on on the road and pull that out too was impressive. Brandon Miller with seven as he hits both free throws. Wade Taylor back, back in. Two, okay. With seven to go in a half. Got to be careful defensively. I'm surprised at this because I feel like they're playing well without him. But it shows how much Buzz really has confidence in him. Exactly. After lost the handle. Miller brings it down behind the back against Dennis. Notice how there's four there's four defensive players on the same side of the floor as Brandon Miller. So he brought it down. He was looking to drive, but he saw them loading to him. So even such that he couldn't even throw a pass back on the same side. He got him out for defense, Brad. Yep. And Gordon comes in for him. Once the offensive firepower of the guy he just calls four in yeah. practice. He is the fourth, and he wears number four. So we saw there some you great go. nicknames in practice. Oh man, we? everybody had one. <laughs> I thought he was going to have one for us by the time we <laughs> left. This is where clearly is really effective in the middle of the floor, getting downhill and finding shooting. Quinterly for three, deep one at the horn. A&M's defense is confusing Alabama. Sometimes they go three-quarter court. Sometimes they go half court. When Miller gets the ball in an iso, they're loading four people on one side of the floor to him. They're forcing other people to make plays. So far, it's working. But Alabama does have the habit of other guys stepping up throughout the year to have big games. Now they got tail in on offense. Dennis thought about a three. Got Miller in the air. And still working. Miller, nice job defensively. Dennis has to just throw up a prayer. And the rebound is Alabama's. Miller swatted away by Wes. Obaseski. Three-pointer short. I love the confidence this guy's come in with, man. I mean, Solomon Watson just got in the game. And he hoists it through. <laughs> Loose rebound, kick out. Alabama saves it. And Garcia goes to the floor. And now Taylor with a pull-up jumper. Neither team connected right now. A little bit wild. That might not look like a good shot, but for Taylor, if you're a three-point shooter that they play like they play him, you've got to take the open ones when you get them. Sears. Wow, left-hand scoop shot got partially blocked. He's shocked there wasn't a foul. Solomon is one of their best defensive players, even though he's a, a freshman. We saw him in practice in the drills, right? How fired up he is in all the defensive drills. There you go. That's what you just said. That's what he can bring when he's out there. Made sure he didn't charge. Little teardrop goes. 13-point lead. Great point about the teardrop. He knows he's got to shoot teardrops now. He's got to shoot floors. He can't go hard to the rim. And off the backside rebound is Solomon Washington. Their ex Texas A&M is executing their game plan perfectly in that defensively they've got Alabama a little bit confused. Not the coaching staff. The players just aren't assertive in making their individual moves. Obasaki on the drive. Wow. No foul. Look at this defense. Right off the bench as a freshman from New Orleans, Solomon Washington.
And then, look, he knows he's got to pull up. If he keeps going, they're going to take a charge on him there. That's why Buzz is trusting him with two fouls. And he did his job, and now he's going to get a breather. One for 15. That is the danger when you're a three-point shooting team. When you go on the road, for whatever reason, it's happened in every game, I can tell you. We had good free for a good three-point shooting team, but you go on the road sometimes, and they just don't fall. Right. Well, they average almost three more or five more three-pointers a game that our opponents. You start doing the math, you're like, no wonder they're 26 and four. <laughs> exactly. But they do have a way of getting to the rim and getting to the offensive glass. And that's what they got to start doing. Great look here. Clowney got it down low. Free throws coming up for Betiaco. But it's Texas A&M. They are not going anywhere here. And Nate Oates working Mike Nance, his star point from where we are right now. Can they get us a ride to the airport I think they after could. the game? I think probably. You've been, on that for, you've been on that for football. I know though, they right? bring in a CBS bus from football. We'll take that <laughs> all the way. I get in a van with you and Matt. <laughs> I get in a little van. <laughs> At least you got some spirit in there. <laughs> yes, a lot of spirit. <laughs> Benny Aco at the free throw line. This this is an adventure here. Yeah, it is. Oh, look nice. at that. I didn't even yeah. want to say what he was shooting coming oh, in. Yeah. Well, when I looked at it, I thought maybe my stats. No, no that's right. right. But he does so much for them. He anchors their defense. And him at the back of the defense allows everybody to get out and pressure the ball. But they've been shooting over. Great I love job. it. He got Great them both. Job. Good job, Charles. See, this is where the tempo the Texas A&M plays is difficult for Alabama because they, they want to speed this up and get possession right. and get back in it. The only way to do it is to press. But they, you don't want to open up the floor on them yet. I wasn't planning on saying what to you what's Alabama got to do to get back in the game. Yeah. I thought it would kind of be the other way around, but now I'm asking. Yeah, you and I have talked about everything else before, but... You know, they, they've got to stop trying to figure out what Texas A&M is doing offensively. And then just go on the attack. Post up, drive, shoot three. Don't think about running offense because they're they're changing up their coverages on them and the players are trying to figure it out. No, Nate Oates knows what they're doing, but the players are being tentative trying to figure it out. Well, they shoot about 33s a game. They're more than halfway to that, but they're one for 16 right now, Alabama. Six to shoot. Radford drives and lofts and scores again. Wow. That floater is lethal. You've got some sides you're shooting over with a Betty Ako in there. Miller, Clowney. And now take away and another turnover for Alabama. Nice defense again by Solomon Washington. These two guards, Radford and Taylor, are really intellectually controlling the tempo of this game. Because right there, that could have been a run out. But they know they can get a shot anytime they want the same way in half court offense. They're going to work the shot clock under 10 again. Bradford gives it up to Taylor. You know what's going up in a second. And the foul, I think, is going to be on Clowney. No. It'll be on Bradley. Taylor and Radford are just such a dynamic combination. If you've got a guard like that that can win amongst the trees, and th that floater is tough. You, you've got to you've got to practice that over years to shoot that with a high level of efficiency like he does. Wade Taylor, you take into account the first half of this game in the last four and a half games. He is 44 out of 48 from the free throw line. <laughs> that is that is impressive. He's got a great point guard body. He's got no neck, which we love. We like we like to measure them from the shoulders down. Not no, the neck does you no good, but he he's got great long legs. No wonder I was a great point guard. I got no neck. Coming up, <laughs> AT and T at the half. Greg Clark and Seth will break down the first half. Get us caught up on a really busy day in college hoops as well. Selection Sunday, just eight days away too. That's all coming up. AT and T at the half. Second of two. So it's like it's automatic. Five free throws and five attempts for Wade Taylor. And Buzz is doing a great job getting him offense, defense no this early in the game. With For him to do this with this much of a lead shows you how valuable Wade Taylor is to this team. Remember, he came back in at the 7.04 mark. And now we're down two minutes and almost four seconds in a moment here. Brandon Miller 
Trying to get off offensively has not really been able to. He's got seven points, only two field goals. Solomon Washington is on Miller. It's length. That time it goes straight up and straight down. That was a freshman mistake by, excuse me, Solomon Washington. That was a really vital mistake because if Miller gets it going, let's remember that shot. There's no reason he should have been that far off him one pass away. And it was not a dribble or anything. It was a catch and deliver on uh, only the second three-pointer of the day for Alabama. Dennis missed off the window, and it comes off to Miller. Looking to run. Got it over on the wing. They go right back to him. And then lose it. Um, look at this. There's, there's no way Solomon Washington can create that much space. There's no way. And you have to be there before he catches. He shoots 46% on catch and shoot, which is incredible for a freshman, especially a guy that's that dynamic off the dribble. And that was 26 feet at least in that shot. We approach a minute. Here's been the star of the game, Boots Radford. Kept alive by Solomon Washington. And see the smart play of kicking that out and, and running clock. It's like football. It's, it's like your ground game in football. Get the ball back, run it, run the clock. Alabama, AM. AM with a timeout. Jalen here teamed up with Mission Tiger to help us bring back school sports. Men's team is putting it on the number two team in the country. 32 to 20. And a really intelligent execution of the game plan. And obviously, Buzz Williams puts that together, but I give it to Wade Taylor and Radford for executing it. Oops, Taylor lost the handle momentarily. Works the baseline, got it underneath, and loose ball. And the officials get in there in a hurry. Uh, hell ball, this one's going to go to Alabama. You know, Jay... Texas A&M, you talk about their defense. They only allowed 27 first-half points in SEC play to their opponents. I don't think Alabama's going to get the 27. Yeah. I'm not sure. No. They might. I don't but, I mean, that's so they're sticky. You, you know what that is, Brad? It's it's intelligent execution of game plan. What happens is you get in at halftime, and the coach gets to talk to the team. Miller got the offensive rebound off the Clowney missed three. They're getting good looks. They really are. You've got to take those shots. Quinterly thought about it. Now drives with nine to shoot. The kick out to the baseline. I'm short. Underneath, though, cleaned up by Clowney. That's Clowney's first basket, isn't it? It not? is. It is. Wow. He's, he's up there, third leading scorer. Final possession. Boots Radford looks up at the shot clock. He's been the star of the first half. He might take the last shot, does, and misses. And that's going to do it. Whoa! <laughs> that throw length of the court by Miller almost went in. Halftime, good job by Buzz Williams. Aggies here trying to stay perfect at home. This would make them not at you, the two out of 19 from the floor. But 21%. Overall field goal, right? You, you can't shoot as you said. Nate's got to tell them, hey, keep hoisting them. They got to start dropping eventually. Shoot them up, sleep in the streets. Can't be afraid to sleep in the streets. Keep shooting them. Here's a guy that's been the star all year long, Taylor, but he throws it away on the opening possession. Alabama also had 10 turnovers in that first half. Great start for Alabama there. I, I was, I was going to say earlier to you, Brad, that. Alabama will have a defense where they'll give up some threes but prevent paint penetration. That, that's what I would go to if I was Nate Oates right now because Texas A&M is not making threes. They're just killing them get to, into the paint and get to the rim. Yeah, I thought the first three was going up. But Clowney pulls it down. Gets it to Sears in the corner. Ten to shoot. Trying to trap Sears. He kicks it out. Miller immediately lost a three that's too strong. And Radford. As we said, with rebounding, he's one of only five guys that's 6'5 or shorter that's averaging 10 points a game and five rebounds a game. Dexter oh, Dennis on the drive draws a foul. Now, Nate Oates is uh, 
presumably going to be the coach of the year in SEC, so he knows what he's doing. But he's, he's not doing what I was thinking of, of congesting the lane and keeping them out of the lane. But he's denying the guards. Look at this. Oh. When you score 84 and only got 22, it makes you look that face yeah, to the exactly. official. That's a look right. <laughs> I didn't think it could be this bad. You didn't think it could be this bad, but we're going to have to play through this and figure out a way. And Nate with the plaid sport coat that would make Wimp Sanderson smile. <laughs> Wimp has had some of the greatest basketball seasons and years ever along with CM Newton for Alabama in their history and this one would be just as good as they can come from behind regular season wise and win number 27 but they are in danger of not letting that happen this this matchup type defense has really gotten Alabama out of their aggressiveness Miller trapped on the baseline nowhere to hide and has to try to knock it off one of the defenders, and he does. So Alabama will maintain possession with eight on the shot clock. Remember, these are the two best teams in the SEC. The number one and number two seeds heading to Nashville this week. They'll both have double buys to get the quarterfinal Friday. If you end up 15 and three in this conference. Wow. Miller was looking for a foul, didn't get a call. I'd seal it up here. I'd pull it out. Oh, yes, I was Wade. And he almost dropped it in. If my name was Wade Taylor, I'd let it go. <laughs> Any, otherwise, I'd pull it out. And a lay in underneath. Easy. That's, that's, that's what we talked about in the first half, Brad. That's one of those possessions again, right? Where they got going too fast, and then as soon as they miss, Alabama turned it into a bucket at the other end. <laughs> This is their this is their tempo. And, and it's also where they're most effective. And a walk. They trap Taylor and they walk with it. Smart play by Miller and Clowney here. This this is called a calculated risk, meaning this wasn't a called double team, but if you're that close, rather than stand and watch them, trap them. Smart play. When you have the length of those two guys with the wingspans, they just pretty much surrounded him. With arms, Miller, three, in and out. Oh, what a follow by Cloudy. That's that's what they need to do in the second half, is just be aggressive shooting, know where the shots are coming from, and go to the glass. Don't try to figure out what a and doing. Jay, this is the first time it's been single digits since it was 18 to 10. Wow. Dennis underneath. Nice drive, strong move. A&M's playing through the post a little bit more. Great pass by Marvel, but they weren't playing through the post in the first half. Sears, three. Way off the mark. And let's see who the foul's on the rebound. I think they're going to call it on Taylor, and that's three. Wow, that's a, that's a tough one there. Here's a follow dunk with authority by Noah Clowney. Noah Clowney starts to get it going here. Sears has got to start to get it going. Hey, there, this is what a road game is all about. This is how you win road games. You just hang tough, right. hang tough, yep, and you steal it in the end. There's an offensive foul in Alabama. That's going to be a pair of socks for, that's going to be a pair of socks for Marble. <laughs> Javon Quinterly's got to know, in this game, you're not going to be able to leave your feet driving the ball because they are loading to the isos. What that means is anytime they see a guy start dribbling and isolating, everybody, all five guys are getting to that side of the floor, forcing him to kick the ball out. Three minutes into the second half. Aggies still with a double-figure lead. And the foul in the lane is going to be on Beniaco, I believe. And that's his third. They've made a concerted effort to go inside. First possession, they turned it over going inside. But they're going inside to Marble and Coleman. And this is where Coleman and Marble can play well together. Stand corrected on Betty Ackle. That's his fourth. Wow. And that takes away a seven-footer out of the Alabama lineup. That's the anchor of their defense. 
Now they're going to be more free will and going to the glass. Going to the offensive glass. Here's a mid-range jumper by Dennis off the mark. Alabama out of bounds. Alabama has come out defensively with a higher level of intensity. And that's that's where it's got to start. you, you, you got to start getting some stops, especially for Alabama, as explosive as they are in transition. And they can get out and run. There's a foul trouble for both teams. Taylor may be more important than anybody. Yeah. And maybe Betty a little bit underrated. We didn't give him enough credit for being in foul trouble in the first half. And he is a leading shot blocker, as you mentioned. Sears with nine to shoot. Dennis staying with him. Ball loose underneath. Comes out to the Aggies. Wow, that was a, a really connected defensive possession. Everybody for the Aggies made concerted efforts to keep the ball out of the paint. Bradford, a little hook shot. Way up there for the rebound is Cloudy. Here they go. They got to go attack. Attack the rim, kick out the threes. And you step on the line. He did. <laughs> Alabama turnover. Still 10 down for the tie. There's before we went to the break. Uh, the step out of bounds on the catch before the shot and the turnover. You know, our boy Gene St Steratore would tell it's you those guys it. are usually right. You yes. know, from right where we're sitting, I couldn't tell that. But they, they usually won't call it unless they definitely have it. I said to you before the game about our three officials, I said I like these guys. I've known them for a long time. I said you probably didn't like any of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like them all now. Yeah, right. After. A rebound, Miller. Here they go. Run. Here they go. He'll do it himself. A little bit of George Gervin on the lay-in. George Gervin is exactly finger roll. I hope our young fans can appreciate they can that. Do that if they <laughs> George Gervin. That's the first field goal of the second half for Miller. He's got 12 to lead Alabama in scoring here five minutes into the half. Taylor's out of the game now. And that puts more pressure on 23. Bradford tried a baseline pass and threw it out. Turnover. Here's this, what Alabama likes to do. Yeah, and, and they're so intelligent. You know, just everybody can get out and run and everybody can finish. Winner, they get some pressure in the backcourt from Gordon. Just keep the ball in the middle of the floor, yes, and make plays. And the lob by Quinterly. Beautiful pass. And the finish by Pringle. I think what Nate Oates is looking at now is anytime we have it on the side of the floor, they're all loading to us. So let's get it, keep it in the middle of the floor. Let's just make plays from the middle of the floor. That cuts it down to six. And Buzz Williams wants to talk about it. You see, you can't load to help if the ball's in the middle of the floor because you got to guard the guys in the corners. And Quinterly knows it, and he leaves it up for Clowney, who can get up with any buzz. Zakai Ziegler is injured now and out for the season. We send our thoughts to him, man. What a great competitor. But I think Wade Taylor the fourth is the best of all of them because he controls tempo and he executes a game plan. They all can score and pass. I want to talk about first year rookie and you have your own caricature or whatever you call those things. And Ben, you're looking it's good a, in that thing. It's like, and you, you hang with me. You even hang with me late night. You know that looks way better than I ever look. I mean, you know, if they're going to make a caricature of George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Denzel Washington, <laughs> so, you know, some of those guys that have asymmetrical faces, they're perfect on both sides, you know, that, that's you. That's you. <laughs> oh, Taylor, there's your point guard. There he is on cue. Buzz had him out with three fouls and needed him back in there. And here's the next great point guard. Quinterly, I would have liked to see him make a play right there in the middle of the floor. Up until that three by Taylor, Dexter Dennis was the only guy that scored this half for the Aggies. That three won't go. Clean up underneath is good. That's their best offense, Brad. You were asking me, what do they need to do? Get Quinterly in the middle of the floor. Let him make plays. Let him kick out the threes and then go offensive rebound. That's, that's the best thing they can do against the Aggies. 
and they're and they're great at that. Here's number four again on the drive. That three that he hit last trip down is 71st of the year. Got the crowd back into it here at Reed Arena. A sellout of 12,989. We're gonna have an offensive foul on uh, Coleman. I could just feel the tide. No pun intended. Yes. Just getting more comfortable <laughs> with AM style play. AM has a unique style of play. That's why they hold teams to so few points in the first half. You get comfortable in the first half, coach coaches you up at halftime, and now they're attacking them much more aggressively. I shouldn't have interrupted you. I thought you were going to say the tide turning. That's <laughs> where I thought you were going. My fault, part. I'm not as good as you at that. <laughs> Quinterly. In with the tall trees, has to kick it back outside. This, this is good offense. They'll take the three, rimmed out. That's all right. With a rebound. They can offensive rebound that. Clearly in the middle of the floor is their best offense. Radford. He'll try a triple and bury it. So he and Taylor both knocked down threes here in the last minute or so. Good answer by Alabama. That, that's that's they they've got to attack them. And man, look at this. We're worrying about Bradford, Bradford getting to the rim, and I'm sure that's what Nate Oates talked to them about at halftime. So they're giving them a little bit of space, and Boots Bradford goes up and drills a three when they give him space. That's why those two guards. Taylor and, and Radford are two of the best in the country. Together, especially the duo with something. Ryan Griffin to the free throw line. And that is his first point of the game. Friday at CBS, it's TV's top news series, Fire Country. The show's critics call explosive, red hot, and crushing harder than ever. Don't miss new episode of Fire Country. Friday at 9, 8 central on CBS. Griffin, the freshman out of Dallas. His second of two. He's going to be a good player for them because he can shoot it and he's a really good player. So he's back down to eight. Taylor pull up. Short. And Miller with a rebound. Push, push, push. He does and drops it off at the very last moment. The Pringle lost the handle. It's Radford, another left-hand three. Dexter Dennis trying to save it. And it's out of bounds to Alabama. You know, AM's getting caught up a little bit with the crowd, like what we talked about in the first half. Just settle it down. And it's also interesting on the Alabama end. That drive by Miller was a great play. He drops it to Pringle. Just a, fre a freshman will get impacted a little bit. A normal freshman. Brandon yep. Miller's not a normal freshman. AM has won their last three against ranked teams. They play in the number two team in the country. They've won 11 straight going back to last year in this arena. But here comes Alabama, and Javon Quinterly knocks down a triple. Notice how they've kept all their offense in the middle of the floor. Their two best offensive players right now, Quinterly and Brandon Miller, in two man games right in the middle of the floor. The last time it was as close as five points, it was five to nothing. Agnes. In the first minute. Dennis works on Miller. Radford trying to clean up underneath. Miller will pull down the miss. They're dangerous. Miller guided by Radford will back it out. This is two big time players here. Baseline three. Goes for Clowney. That's a problem. You got a 6'10 guy that you just don't think is going to shoot threes, and he can. And you have a leading scorer in the SEC willing to give the ball up and make that pass to his teammate. Oh, and Taylor just threw it. I think he was trying to throw it to a teammate. He threw it out of bounds right to the official. Look at this. He's got a chance to drive this. Finds Clowney in the corner from up there. So Doug Shiles is there. He's wide open. I mean, he was open for a shot, Shiles, if he gets the ball, guys. But I think, Buzz, it was a communication on a timeout request. Yeah, that's what I thought it was, too. And, I, and Doug, you, as you said it perfectly, he was wide open. <laughs> Quinterly on the drive. Rejected inside. Fresh chance for Alabama. They have not led 
They still don't. Here's the outlet to Radford. Miller trying to stay with him. And Miller's going to pick up the foul. That's still good offense for Alabama, though. That, that's what they do. Middle of the floor, drive it, kick back the threes, offensive rebound. That, that's that's they're going to be their, their way to win this game. Here's Tyrese Boots Radford going up against Miller and Pringle, and he'll go to the free throw line where he's two for two in the first half. Brandon Miller actually got there. If you if he would have stood his ground and put his chest up into the offense play, he could have gotten that charge, but he started leaning back too early, gave up position. I know we've spent some time in the first half talking about the free throw shooting at Texas AM. They have not missed a free throw. You think those things aren't important? Uh, they're huge, and it's why they are where they are as one of the top teams in the country and second in the in the SEC. They're 13 for 13 right now. And they know it, and they find their way to the line. It's part of their offensive philosophy. Stay in the middle of the floor. Don't get it on the sidelines where they can load. Twitterly. Drive, left hand, rejected. Underneath by Garcia. Gordon bring it the other way, and the drop off to Garcia. Offense from defense. He's going to go to the free throw line. Good job by number 11 on both ends. We've seen Anderson Garcia do this in a number of games. At the end of the Mississippi game, ooh, that, ooh, that was close. Have, that might have hit the backboard first. That was so close, it's hard for the officials to tell because he put it so high off the glass. That might have touched the backboard first. Let's take a look at this. Let, let's see. Let's we'll check see after this. his first free throw, which is no good. That's her first miss. Goes up. Yeah, it hits first. It's on its way down after hitting the backboard. Should have been goaltending. Wow. When you play aggressively like that, though, you get away with plays. Well, that was so like bang, that. bang, and yeah. it was going in a hurry, and it was within centimeters. Garcia got the second free throw, and the lead goes back to five as we're approaching the midway point of the second half. I hate to keep saying it's the middle of the floor. Now they can't load when you're in the middle of the floor. Miller's trying to get there. He's good. He's good here. That's a tough lob for Pringle. Gordon just kind of had his hip under him, and Alabama turns it over. That was a great job by Gordon, keeping his position inside on a mismatch. 14th Alabama turnover. Look at Gordon here. Battling. That could have been a foul. That could have been a foul, because if you, if you don't leave your feet, you come under a guy like that. A lot of times they'll call that. That would be a hip check in hockey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they left Radford, and he almost scored it as they switched up on him. But now Quinterly comes out of the pile with it. Miller, long three. Got it. It was only a matter of time. He's not going to stop shooting them. That's what makes him great. And he's going to continue to shoot them. And he, if he gets hot, that could change the game. His 92nd three-pointer of the year. Again, they can't load to him when he's in the middle. Quinterly puts the pressure on the defense, sucks the defense in, finds Brandon Miller at the top of the key. Bradford gets it right back, looking for the drive with the left hand. This one's short, though, and it's out of bounds to Alabama. You're just feeling like Alabama is starting to get their confidence yes. against Texas A&M. And this is where Taylor or Radford got have to make a play for Texas A&M. They're giving Radford a, a blow here. But this is where they got to make a play to give their teammates confidence. It'll be interesting with him not out there. Who picks up his slack on both ends, really. He's been that good today and all year. Quinterly puts an elbow in and then goes up with a right hand, and we are tied for the first time today. That's a tough physical drive. How many games this year has Quinterly come off the bench, Alabama down, and then created offense for them in the middle of the floor? Taylor scores on the other end on a contested off-the-window shot. Get it to Quinterly, get it back to Quinterly in the middle of the floor. It's your best offense. Miller off 
the window. Showing his versatility. Or if you have a player of the year candidate, give it to him in the middle it of the floor. Let him hurt. Go. He's got 17. About three away from his average. Taylor again. Wow. Taylor knows. He knows. He's looking at the personnel out on the floor with him. He's got to be the one to make plays. Brandon Miller's got Quinterly with him to help him. Here is Miller. Baseline kick out. Three-pointer on the way is short. Dennis and Washington both go up and grab the rebound. Riley Griffin is a good shooter, just not making shots. Wade Taylor lost the handle, thought he was fouled. Now he's going to have to get back on defense. He might have turned his ankle as well. It's five on four right now for Alabama. Seven forty to go. Brandon Miller can finish at the rim with anybody, and Wade Taylor has the answer for him. A curse when you're the team that gets it because the team that played before you is in rhythm, and you haven't played. They won't have played till since Saturday, this game. And that team comes out ready to play. If you get past that first game, you're in good shape. They're not as warmed up as the opposition, that's for sure. Good job getting the ball out of the corner by Sears. Clearly, a lot of dribbling going on on the baseline and trying to find an open guy and turn it over instead. Texas A&M defense is so connected when you get down on the sidelines and the baselines and they just force you into trap situations which are difficult passes. That's why I liked it when Sears dribbled that ball out and get it up in the middle. I'm, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse, but I would not do anything to them on the sideline or on the baseline. Wade Taylor taking his time as we approach seven minutes. Two it's Radford back in the game. Taylor on a runner. Kept alive by Solomon Washington. The strategy on those runners is that Marble and Coleman know, and now Washington, they know he's going to shoot it, so he's not passing it. They're going for the offensive rebound. There's a pass to Garcia from Radford. In close, had it blocked, and taken down by Sears. Nice defense by Alabama. Chance to tie for the tie. Crowd getting loud in Reed Arena. Pediaco back in. A great roll man if they could get him to pick and roll. Miller for the tie. No. Rebound. Washington. No reason. Slow this up. That's... I, I like right, the matchup of Radford on Quinterly. And Sears is going to pick up the foul. What Buzz is going to look at now is, as it comes down to stretches, who, who's got the best matchup? Wade, Taylor, or Radford? And, and I think right now, Radford with Quinterly is the better matchup. That's a couple of careless turnovers oh, in the kidding. second half. It's going to be the 12th on the Aggies, and you just can't let this kind of stuff happen. Garcia just yeah. felt like there was somebody behind him or whatever. He didn't put his arm all the way out. So Alabama, again with the chance here, down two. When the Betty Ocko's in it, watch for him rolling. He's a great roll guy to the rim. Literally loves hitting him. Literally got double team, but... He also got fouled. This is the better defensively Alabama is when Bradley's in there. But with Quinterly, they're a much better offensive team. That's what they need right now. Bradley's only played nine minutes. Here's Miller for the tie, and he does. The heart of this Alabama team is really impressive. This is how you win road games. They're not pretty, but it's never pretty. Third tie of this half, and that one goes for Taylor. He went at Quinterly. Great kick ahead by Quinterly. Boy, Alabama got a court in a hurry. Miller missed. The tip's no good. The second one is for Clowney. When you have Clowney and Bediaco on the floor, those drives 
and putting them up on the rim, just like passes, because right. you know they're going to go to the offensive glass. 51-51, with just over five minutes to go, and an offensive foul on the Aggies. And Radford picks it up. Wow. Look at these guys. They know when they get to the rim, if they just put it up there, Bediaco's coming, Clowney's coming. Clowney's really come to life in the second half. Yeah, he has. And as a freshman on the road, he just took that charge. That That is really valuable when you get a guy like that. He's a double figures now, 11. Five minute mark, tie game. When are they wanting Clowney to clear out? Works through the middle of the lane. Miller for the Alabama lead, rims it out. Kept alive. Out to Quinterly. Hesitates and let's go. And Quinterly drops it in. And Alabama leads for the first time this afternoon. Credit Bediaco there for a great assist on the offensive rebound, finding Quinterly immediately. And now they will get an official timeout for the Aggies. No throwing the ball to the sideline. Buzz Williams said, let's talk this thing over right now. Bediaco has been in foul trouble the whole game. Him back in the game on the offensive glass is huge. Deep Colgate followed by American battling Lafayette. That's all tomorrow on CBS Sports Network. Alabama, the number two team in the country and the number one seed and the regular season SEC champions lead for the first time today. The foul trouble stays pretty much the same. And we still have four and a half minutes to go in regulation. They've got to get Bediaco away from the rim so Taylor and Radford can drive it. A running three by Taylor. He worked around a screen, thought he got fouled, and then said, I'm letting this baby fly. <laughs> and this place has erupted. Woo. Tied at 54. Benyako slipping. And a jump ball called. And possession is going to stay with Alabama. Hearts out right here, and this crowd wants this game bad. You know what's interesting here, Brad? End of the game here, Bediaco is so important to the offensive rebounding and the defense. But if he gets fouled here at the end, not a good free throw shoot. No, 36%. We didn't even tell a percentage for him earlier because he hit one of two. He wouldn't put it past Buzz to foul him if he got it. Miller going to work. And one. Nope. Offensive foul. Take it back. That's that loading defense we are talking about before he took off. Watch how Garcia is there before he even takes off on the ISO. He was already on that side of the floor. Great take by Garcia. And that's some big plays Garcia's made. Absolutely. Well, he came up with a big steal in the Mississippi game at yep. the end to really put the game away. He's taking charges all year. He's got a lot of socks. <laughs> Three and a half to go. Taylor ran into. Now they got Quinterly. Quinterly on Taylor. This is the matchup. And he's all over him right now. Taylor has to give it up. Dennis, fade away. In and out. That's a big time offense rebound. I would have liked to see him get that out. Coleman's a really smart player. But they got it. They're lucky. They kept possession right here. Quinterly knows he doesn't want to guard him. Taylor 101. And Sears just fouled Radford before the ball was even thrown on, on the baseline. And that's his third. I was going to say, Eric, the, the strategy is really good here. They're trying to deny these guys because they don't. <laughs> you know what, Brad? Some of these guys are really good at this. And Boots is. They get their arm under them. They kind of wrap it. And then as they start to run, they throw their arms up. Yep. These guys are so smart getting to the foul line. There's nothing better you can do in the line here than get, a, get to the foul line. Boots, a senior out of Baton Rouge. Four for four from the stripe today for his 15 points. They've only missed one free throw all day. They still only missed one free throw all day. This Wednesday, new season of Survivor is just getting started. Don't miss the epic challenges and stunning game moves. Dare to watch a new Survivor Wednesday on CBS and streaming on Paramount+.
as the 13,000 goes quiet while I'm doing the survivor. <laughs> we'll see who the survivor of this battle of number one and right. two in the SEC will do. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go. This place is awesome, man. This is big time SEC basketball. Texas A&M is feeling it. And they throw it away as Solomon Washington with a steal. Interesting, they got Solomon Washington, a freshman, in for defensive purposes after the game. You want it in this guy's hands. Whoops, and he got fouled by Miller, and that's going to be four fouls on. Is that four fouls on Miller? It is. This is one of the things that defensive players can't do. When you get on the side of a player shooting, all you have to do is put your hands up on the side because it, it really impacts his vision. As soon as you reach across the shooter, they're going to call it every time. So we would always tell our guys, when you get on the side of a guy, just throw hands straight up. That will bother him enough. And, of course, Wade Taylor knows how to draw that foul. That's 47 makes of his last 52 attempts. <laughs> and this one would tie his career high. 25 for Wade Taylor. So notice how the last two possessions, they've gotten themselves in a foul line, both Radford right. and, and Taylor. And they, they know, end of the game, the foul is more valuable than getting off a shot, especially the way they shoot it. Wade Taylor, career high. Gives his team a five-point lead with just under three to go. Plenty of time for Alabama. Plenty of time. Literally, in a horn set. Clowney almost walked. Sears, a triple. Got it! Great pass by Clowney. Man, has he come on in the second half. Picked up the dribble and almost walked and then zipped that pass out to Sears who buries the three, his first of the day. Washington got bumped. No foul called. Basket doesn't drop. And Clowney with yet another rebound. That was a freshman play. Let's see if it hurts him. Solomon Washington should have kicked that ball out to one of the guards. Here's the best freshman in the country on the drive, and he'll give it up. Quinterly. Three-pointer doesn't go. Battle for the rebound. And that could be his a fifth. Foul. If it's on number 24, he's done. It is, and he is. To be in this position, have the ball is hit. He was right. a big-time scorer in high school. And Clowney has been playing great the second half. They've, they've got answers here. Quinterly. Obviously, you'd rather have them in. Yes. Quinterly actually had a season high in the win, in the overtime win over Auburn, so they might be leaning even more heavy on him the final two minutes. Meanwhile, Dexter Dennis continues the free throw barrage for the Aggies of Texas A&M. Three possessions in a row now that have gone to the foul line. This is why it's so valuable to be a great free throw shooting team. Boy, and they are lighting it up from the strike. This year, when Texas A&M has held the opposition to 66 points or less, they're 21 and 0. <laughs> Alabama has 57 right now with 150 to play. So now they're just putting Sears in Brandon Miller's spot, and Sears and Cooney are going to play two man game. Cloudy hanging in the air, no foul called as Coleman hit the deck. And the Aggies have got it back with 130 to play and a four-point lead. I would give Coleman a pair of socks for that one, even though they didn't call Because that was a great defensive play on the drive. If you missed it earlier, you get a pair of socks if you take a charge with this program. Some of these guys are going to need a bigger dresser when the season's <laughs> over. This is where these guards are so valuable. Five on the shot clock. Get an offensive rebound here. Kick it out. Don't Radford at the last second. Did it touch the rim? They can go to the clock here. They can, they can go to the uh, monitor and check this. End of the game situations here now, Brad. Brad every offensive rebound that AA comes up with, you got to think about kicking it out. It hit the that back of the did, iron, I think, it, didn't it? It did. It looked like it hit the neck of the iron. So, Chuck Shaw's in front of you here. 
take a look at the replay. Now the question is, what would be interesting here from Gene is, are they checking the shot clock or are they checking here the out of bounds call? Because they didn't make a call. They did not make a call here on shot clock. Gene, what do you think? Well, Coach is absolutely right. I think you're looking at both. And after looking at the replays, I think this basketball does goes over top around and but never contacts the rim. And at that point, when it hits the glass, I know we're at one second on the shot clock. Now, they can review everything. Uh, so if there is time remaining in the shot clock, I, they're then going to look at the out of bounds. And, and from my takes, it looked to me as if last touched by Alabama. But this basketball does not hit. And if we look up at the left there, you see the one on the shot clock kind of sitting there for what appears to be a pretty long time. So I think they're going to look, they're definitely looking at all of this right now. Yep. And after we saw the super slow mo, and then that particular one, I don't think it hit the rim. I thought it did at first. Yeah. You could see the actual rivets holding the rim up there in the shadow. You can see the ball go over it and not touch right. it. So I think that's going to be the call, but we're going to let Chuck Chaz and Landis Pool. And the question it out. for Gene is they did not make a call on the shot clock violation. So can you check it if you have not made a call for shot clock violation? That's what I'd like to hear from Gene. Yeah, you know what? You can, Coach. I mean, at this point now, you're reviewing all aspects of the play. If this shot clock expired prior to that ball going out of bounds officially, then you would, in essence, have then a shot clock violation. So, yeah, they can definitely do that. Okay. Doug just, Doug Johns just came over. Shot clock violation. The ball goes to Alabama with 108 remaining in regulation. And a and up, up four. You know, you don't want a shot clock violation, but the next best thing is to run as much time. Exactly. A&M is competing with the clock right now as much as they're competing with Alabama. Here's Quinter. On the drive. One minute with a layup by Quinterly. He's got 12. This is a point where AM doesn't want to foul, and Alabama knows it. So they're going to go aggressively to the rim and take the twos when they can get them. Now, this possession is important. You want to go to the end of the shot clock. Under, you want to take the shot with under eight seconds. Give yourself a chance for an offensive rebound. And the good thing is, for the forwards, don't expect the pass. Let them put the shot up on the glass so you can offensive rebound. The guy with the ball on the dribble has a career-high day going. And more not on that three. Rebound off to Sears. And a steal. Adams got it back. And they're fouling Taylor. They had to. Wow. What a play. How about, how about this play right here? Garcia won the last game for them against Ole Miss. He made the steal to win the game, and he does it again. Doug, that I'm is playing big. the passing lane. <laughs> I mean, what a huge play for him. And, you know, against Alabama, that's one of those plays as a coach, you kill him if he doesn't get it because if they kick it up the floor he doesn't get back on defense, you're, you, you want to kill him for that. But that's what players do. That's the beauty of trusting your players. That, that was a big time play. And there's nobody in the conference you'd want at the free throw line more than this guy. <laughs> Continues to add to his career high total for the day. If he makes this and it's a two possession game, they don't need a three. Take the two. They're not going to foul you. Get a timeout and set up your press. Got them both. Perfect from the strike. Coleman goes out. Solomon Washington comes in defensively with 30 seconds to go. I want to let the viewers know right now, if A&M upsets Alabama, there's not going to be a handshake line. Alabama's going to go ahead straight to the locker room. It's not a sportsman thing. It's just a safety issue. Greg Byrne, their athletic director, told us that. And both coaches agreed to that before the game. I just wanted to say that because... They're only 15 seconds away now from upsetting the number two team in the country. And with 13,000 people in here, uh, Nate Oates and his team is just going to say, okay, guys, you beat us and head to the locker room. It's not over yet. I'm just right. telling everybody. And Buzz was good with that. that was, Buzz Williams was very supportive of that. Well, you talk about two guards having great games, Wade Taylor and Tyrese Boots Radford, who's at the free throw line. Neither has missed a free throw. 
These two teams, Brad, for Alabama to show that they can play in this type of environment, not shoot the ball well and have a chance to win the game is impressive. And Texas A&M, their ability to get to the foul line at the end of the game. It's going to put them in a position to beat anybody in the NCAA tournament. Dexter Dennis goes out. Wade Taylor now leading the cheers from midcourt here for the 12,800 plus on hand. Still only a two possession game. Right. So you, here is where you want to get a three, or here's where you can draw a foul and a three, because they're going to try to take away three. There goes the three. It's from a mile out there, and the rebound is Radford's, and he's fouled with six seconds to go, and now the crowd can start to feel it. Actually, not a bad shot. If you can get one off, you got to take it in that situation by Javon Quinterly. And this is a huge, huge rebound. And Brad, it's, it's Bradford. Again. Right? There's, of all the guards in the country that are below 6'5", six, 6'5", five, six, five or below, he's the third leading rebounder. He's done everything today. There's only five guys 6'5", and under that have had 10 points and five rebounds a game. This guy's only 6'2". He's <laughs> one of them. And this is going to be a school record victories in conference play. I don't even care if you're back in the Southwest Conference. They didn't win this many games, and they didn't have this kind of performance against this caliber of a team. And AM is the only team that Nate Oates has not beaten. So Al he's a competitor. Nate is a great competitor. You know he wanted this one too. Yep. But Alabama's going to be just fine. Their ability to handle this pressure in here is pretty impressive. Boy, give me these two guards any day of the week, will you? Yes. Alabama's not going to get to 66 points. They're going to get to 61. And Texas AM. For the 22nd time this year, playing that good a defense is perfect when they hold a team under 66. 67-61 is the final. And